Disgraced former teen mom to star Janelle Evans has officially filed to separate from her professionally unemployed, dog-killing, child-beating husband, David Eason. The USN managed to get their hands on her court filing, so let's take a look at some of the allegations that Janelle is suddenly making against David Eason, shall we? Don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more pop culture videos and reality TV recaps. Janelle filed these papers on February 23rd, claiming that she and David officially separated on February 16th, quote, with the intent that the separation be permanent, meaning that they're hoping that within a year she can move forward and get a divorce from David because in North Carolina, you can't just go and file for divorce immediately. You have to have one year of an official separation first. Janelle accuses David of exhibiting very bizarre and concerning, disturbing behavior towards her throughout their marriage. And she says that in May of 2019, David shot and offed the family's pet French bulldog Nugget in front of Ensley, which is even more disturbing than I remember because from my recollection, from the video that David posted online and his um, accounting of the event, Nugget nipped at Ensley as she was playing all up in his face and neither David nor Janelle told her to back off. Um, and so at that point, they said that David took the dog out back and then he shot the dog. But no, apparently this happened within Ensley's line of sight and that is extremely disturbing. I'm quite shocked that he didn't face even child cruelty charges for that. So Janelle goes into how that incident led to CPS removing all the children from the household, which is only a half truth because CPS allowed for her to keep the custody of the children under the condition that she kicked David out of the house and stay with them. But per usual, men come before children in Janelle's world and so she made the executive deadbeat decision to kick the kids out of the house and keep the dog killer. And that is not the only instance of violence that David has inflicted into the household, allegedly, of course. Janelle also referred to David's alleged assault on Jace that is reported to have happened late last year. She says that on or about September 28th of 2023, a report was made to medical professionals by plaintiff's oldest minor child. Janelle claimed in her filing that after the sheriff's office investigated the allegations, David was subsequently charged with misdemeanor child abuse and felony assault by strangulation. The separation filing goes into the CPS investigation, how it was closed and dismissed, but how despite that happening, David is still facing the misdemeanor charge and the felony charge, and he is not to be anywhere near Jace, which is why he was ultimately kicked out of the house this time around. Um, they're saying that David lives on her boat, which is docked in a nearby marina, and he spends his days drinking and not looking for a damn job as he should to take care of his children. She also said that David refused to give her a key to their mailbox. And as a result, she's been unable to pick up Jace's medication, leaving Jace at risk for adverse health effects, which is strange to me. I'm like, how the hell does a man who pays no bills in your home manage to keep keys that you don't have and like, you know, block your access to your own damn mailbox. That is so crazy to me. And on top of that, it's interesting that now all of a sudden Janelle believes in medical intervention for her child. Don't you guys remember one of the big issues that Jace was having was that while he was under Barbara's care, Janelle still had custody. And so she was not allowing and this was after his runaway and then he got sent back to Barbara's. She was not allowing for Jace to have his medication. And so without his medication, things got bad again and he wound up running away again. So it's interesting. And then she and David would go online and claim that Barbara was trying to poison him with medicine and stuff and that it was bad for him, medicine and therapy. But now, okay, I guess CPS or whoever might've really like set her straight and said, give this child his damn medication. Um, or you're gonna F around and find out. You're gonna lose custody for damn good next time. And so I guess that's why. And so my question here is, let's not have pharmacies. I'm pretty sure y'all had Walgreens there last I checked. So why is Janelle only able to access Jace's medicine by mail? That's very strange to me. I have never, I don't think I've ever received like prescribed medication by mail. I only get like my Amazon vitamins by mail, not like that kind of stuff, but I digress. Janelle also lashed out at David for leaving his daughter Marissa in the home after she kicked him out. She said, listen, that's your child, not mine. You know, she can live on the boat with you. She can go back to her mom's, but she is not staying here in my house. I am done with you, which means I'm done with her too. 
And that honestly breaks my heart for Marissa. You know, obviously Marissa doesn't want to live with David, especially not on some damn boat. Um, and her mom, I guess her mom is a little bit complicated too, because listen, you don't just lose custody to David Easton for no reason. Right. Um, and I, I, I can only vaguely remember some of the stuff that the mom has said online, um, that had led me to believe that she's not the greatest fit either for Marissa. So prayers to Marissa, you know, there's between the three of them, like she has no luck either way. Luckily she's 16 years old. So only two more years until she can live on her own. So I want to give a shout out to LB on this part because I believe she was the first to report on this, that uh, Janelle actually kicked Marissa out of the house. I remember in Elle's story, she said something along the lines of Janelle texting Marissa while she was in school, telling her to leave her key to her room somewhere and that she wouldn't be able to return there or something like that. So that is a really, really sad way to get kicked out of the home that you've been living in for the past like seven years, you know? Now, um, in the filing, Janelle said that she did that because she wanted to focus her care on Jay's quote, especially since he had just been forced into DSS custody because of alleged acts of DV by the defendant, being David Eason, of course. And so now, Remember, at the top of this video, we talked about how Janelle filed for separation on February 23rd. And in this filing, she recounts that the day before she filed, David showed up to their swamp uninvited and unannounced. And um, it was despite the no contact order that Jace has against him, he did that specifically to harass Janelle. She says, and I quote, for the purpose of harassing or, or annoying plaintiff, defendant took plaintiff's vehicle without her permission and told her to off herself among other vile insults, which plaintiff filmed the interaction for her safety. I'm glad she filmed it. And I believe every word she said, even if there were, wasn't any video evidence, because we have seen prior video evidence of David saying those sorts of things towards Janelle in the past, remember? So I totally believe her and I'm glad that she managed to film that because that is disturbing. She said Jace was home, but he was not present during this actual like, you know, altercation. But maybe he heard, listen, I don't imagine that those construction paper walls are all that thick. He might've heard the yelling and whatnot. Listen, I wonder if David was drunk because she's basically saying that he's a drunk, you know? So to me, I'm like, huh, I wonder if that's something, you know, he got lit, he drove on over and decided to just be belligerent basically. So do you guys remember that story that broke also on the US Sun a couple of months ago and it was sold by David's ex-wife, Whitney. So basically Whitney had turned over some text messages that David Eason had sent to her trashing Janelle. He, he was saying she's filthy, she's lazy, she's just, you know, just she sucks basically. And that he misses his ex-wife and he wants to go back and be a family again with his ex-wife and their daughter Marissa and whatnot. So initially when those text messages came out, Janelle and David in a leaked audio, they called Whitney and her husband and Janelle was like hysterical about it. She wanted proof. She didn't believe it. She didn't want to believe it. David kept saying it was all fake. And then eventually they put on a united front on social media, accusing them of faking those text messages. But now it seems that Janelle finally sees the light, okay? She talks about it in this filing. She says that was a form of marital misconduct, AKA a form of infidelity, emotional infidelity, to go and send those sorts of text messages to his ex about wanting to be with her and disparaging his own wife while, you know, they're still together and everything like that. Now, uh, furthermore, there's another claim that says, and I quote, defendant has committed further marital misconduct in that defendant upon information, belief, carried on criminal conversations with his ex-wife. So I don't know what part of that is criminal. Maybe they were soliciting drugs from one another. I don't know, but alas, that is something that she is saying in her uh, filing. So she also says that he further committed more marital misconduct in that the defendant upon information belief, and she says that there are other cases of marital misconduct that David had committed. She lists them as him excessively using alcohol, um, how he has not maintained consistent full-time employment for a number of years, how he has recklessly spent the party's money, which uh, Janelle is the sole earner of, and in other ways that will be shown at trial. Here's the thing though, if you meet an unemployed broke man and you decide to go ahead and marry him and have a kid with him, in my opinion, you can't just turn around and complain that he's 
the same unemployed, broke, unambitious man that you married. You know, you went into that marriage knowing that this man had no job, no money, no interest in working. So I don't know that that is technically marital misconduct because from my perspective, that seems to be an arrangement that you guys had within your specific marriage. So we're gonna have to wait and see how that ultimately winds up playing out. But I, d I think it's a little too convenient, you know, that you, you're you okay with this until you're ready to leave this man. Like, sorry, you knew exactly what you were signing up for and you signed up anyway in that regard. I think that Janelle is going to have to pay David alimony because she was her princess. He was a kept man. He was her sugar baby, you know? And so, listen, you can't just throw him out onto a boat. By the way, you guys, should we do a GoFundMe to raise money for a bucket for David? So since David is living on some small rinky dink boat that doesn't even have a toilet or anything like that, I am wondering how he does his business. The only business that David has any hand in is potty business because he has no ambition and no job, right? And no business, real business or enterprise either. So I'm wondering, David, seeing as you have no money, you probably don't have a bucket that you need in order to use the bathroom on your boat. So guys, do we care? Should we do a GoFundMe to raise maybe, how much are these at the dollar store? Two, three dollars for David to have a bucket? Let me know in the comments section. He might need it on that boat. <laughs> oh. So yeah, Janelle now accuses him of committing full-blown crimes here. She says that David regularly drinks and drives and spends excessive money on alcohol, money which he does not earn and which could otherwise go toward the financial well-being of the minor children, MDR. Here's the thing about the drinking and driving. I wonder if she's gonna use like photos that we've already seen on the internet that like she's also implicated in. How many times have we seen them in that truck with open things of beer, bottles and cans of beer in the coasters and stuff? with the drink holders in the car, you know, like go ahead, go show that. But the gag is you're in that car too, you know, as he's drinking and driving, but I digress. So she really, really seems to be fed up with him being a drain on her money. And then she talks about how he made her lose her money. Remember, Janelle was fired from Teen Mom too because she wanted to stand by her man and couldn't film without him being present because he was her security blanket and everything like that. And so, um, you know, a lot of people have been speculating online whether or not this might be a potential ploy for Janelle to make her way back onto the fledgling teen mom franchise, but only time will tell on that. To be honest with you guys, I am still not a thousand percent convinced about this uh, separation and divorce. I am kind of like of the belief that I will believe it when I see it because Janelle has separated from David in the past. She has made very extreme allegations against him and the way he treats her and their children. Um, she did a YouTube documentary about it, all just to go back to him. So I feel like unless, until that divorce is signed, sealed, delivered, I'm not gonna believe this like 100%, you know? Now, when it comes to Janelle's marital conduct as a wife, she's, she claims that she has been a faithful, and dutiful spouse to the defendant and has stuck by the defendant's side through the criticism of millions of people across the world on social media who voice concern regarding the defendant's behaviors. Defendant's conduct has caused plaintiff employment compensation and degraded her public image. Listen, Janelle, you didn't have a good public image before this man, so let's stop let's stop hiding behind him she does this quite a bit in this filing i pointed it out earlier when we talked about her claiming that david caused her to lose custody of those kids when we know that that's not necessarily the 100 percent truth cps gave her the option to keep them kids she said actually kobe get out of here you know and then again before david she already had this image of being negligent towards jace negligent towards animals maybe even abusive towards animals and Jace, you know, and her other kids. So it was always there before David. David did not completely destroy your reputation like that. You wound up with him for a reason, and that's because you guys are pretty damn similar. So now when it comes to how their assets will be distributed as they head towards a divorce, Janelle is fine with a certain level of distribution, but she doesn't want it to be equal because David was not paying for anything and David was not making money. All he was doing was spending money, okay? But here's the thing. Was David taking care of the home? Was David cooking? Was David helping to transport the children? I believe that he was. So that does count as labor. That is in the home labor that David 
deserves to be compensated for, right? Like any stay at home spouse would be compensated for. So, um, you know, I don't think he's going to walk away with absolutely nothing from this situation. Now, Janelle seems to be worried that David is going to show up to her home again, uninvited because she's claiming that David has been messaging her or making statements that she cannot keep him from his home. And so she really wants to secure her rights to the home. She's saying that she is in need of the sole use, enjoyment and possession of the property for the benefit of herself and the minor children and hereby request this court to enter an order sequestering the property for the benefit of plaintiff and the minor children. And so David was served a copy of the uh, separation filing the same day that it was filed February 23rd. You guys listen, he can't be that hard to find. Like Janelle says, he's always either on the boat or at the bar. So voila, you guys, this is crazy. It really, really is. I'm quite shocked by some of the stuff that she is putting in here. And I think she's still going quite easy on David because the first time that she tried to separate from him, she put a lot more damning information in there. Remember she claimed that David had would punish the kids. Uh, when he was mad at her by being really mean towards them. Um, she also talked about how David had allegedly locked Kaiser into a running car with the keys on the inside, like just stuff like that. Um, so she did go relatively easy on him, but listen, this is just the beginning, security debut. So I think that eventually as this moves forward, she's gonna add more tea. She said, just wait, video dropping, you know, who you think I am. So just wait for more tea to spill. Again, I am reserving my belief i'm suspending my belief or disbelief i don't remember how that goes um until i see the official divorce decree because they've played this game before and um so i'm not a thousand percent sure about them to be honest with you but i do want to know what you guys think about all of this um it's interesting that now janelle all of a sudden is ready to leave david you know and now she's out here backing up things that she was initially denying, right? So before on the internet, even when it came to Jay, she was throwing him under the bus. She was claiming that the family needed to be protected from him and his mental health and how he was this terrible person basically. Um, and then she was doing these like big essays supporting David as he was facing these charges for allegedly assaulting Jace, right? And now she's like, look, David caused me to lose custody of Jace. David has been charged with this, that, and the other. Like that to me, that about face is really like, it's, it's got, you know, it's making my head shake. You know, I can't even imagine what it is to be Jace, to have your mom go and gaslight you in public and make you out to be a terrible person because this monster beat you up, right? Um, and now here she is because she suddenly wants to leave this man, not because she wanted to protect you, but because she suddenly wants to leave this man. She's like, yeah, and he hit my kid. As if she is some dutiful mother who cares about this child. You know, like that's sickening to me. She really... Janelle Evans, Janelle Lauren Evans, the piece of sh that you are like for that is there are no words, honestly, no words that truly is unforgivable in my books. Um, and then what else? The text messages to his ex-wife. Again, she was out there denying it, trying to gaslight us all about that and what was going on there. Now here she is ready to admit that that was exactly what we saw it as, you know? Um, so anyway, it's gonna be interesting to watch this play out in court. I will be keeping an eye open. So if you haven't already, do make sure to subscribe to my channel for more news and updates on this and the other celebrity stories and reality television recaps. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat and don't forget to like this video as well if you enjoyed it. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.